You say hi? Hey guys, this is um, your first flip video for Power Standard. I think it's three. I think it says five down there, but I think it's actually Power Standard three. Motions of the moon. Yep, it says three. And this is about the moon phases. So please put a title on your notebook page that says motions of the moon. And then you're going to want to put today's date on there. Make sure it's, o it's always important to have titles and dates. It's also a good idea to get some highlighters out so when then I give you a vocabulary word, you can highlight it and make it stand out better. Yeah. Oh, wait. Motions of the moon. You want to read the sentence? The telling thing. Changing. Changing persons of the moon, earth, and sun cause the planets of phases. the phases. phases of the moon. Eclipses. Eclipses and tides. Mm -hmm. So the moon phases are kind of hard to kind of grasp in your head why you see different like positions or different shadings of the moon. So tonight when Owen and I were out visiting my grandpa, what kind of moon did you see? What, do you remember? It was an itty bitty bitty like it looked like a thumbnail, itty bitty crescent. Yeah, the tip of a thumbnail. Yeah, it was so like small, but it was like bright orange. In a few days, it, days the moon is going to go completely away, and then the moon will start coming back. But the moon technically isn't away; it's just a different portion of the lit, different amount of the lit portion faces us. Here's one interesting fact that this picture is showing you. The same side of the moon always faces the Earth. So since the caveman, we've only seen one part of that sphere of the moon. The other part of the sphere could very well be colonized. It could have aliens in the back of the moon. We don't know. The same side always faces us because as the moon goes around the Earth, the moon also tilts just at the right speed that the same side always faces us. It's kind of interesting. He is asking, are aliens real? And I don't know if aliens are real or not. That is up for discussion, but I think our universe is so big, maybe there are aliens. What do you think? Mm -hmm. There could be. So, Mom, I gotta get what? We can look on Google? Mm -hmm. He wants to Google it. That will give you interesting results. You can Google it. Oh, why don't you guys Google, are aliens real? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it does, the moon does rotate as it revolves. The rotation takes around 27 days and it revolves around 28 days. So the same side always faces us. Okay, right, the phase of the moon you see depends on how much of the sunlit side faces Earth. So over here, this, Pretend this is the moon. No. Mm -hmm. What's that yellow thing say? The sun. So the sun is on to the right. You got your Earth here. In the middle. Of all the moons. And then this is the moon going around. If the moon was at this position here, the whole lit side is actually towards the sun. We just see the back side of the moon, which isn't lit. So it's kind of in the moon's own shadow. So that is a new moon. New, I also say no in my head, so remember that's the moon that's all darkness. As the moon goes around us counterclockwise, which is the opposite of the clock, it starts lighting up a little bit more. So here, the first quarter, we get to see part of the moon lit. When it gets to be the full moon, we get to see the whole shebang lit up. Yeah. Like, when our teeth are lit up, we're all white. Just like the moon is all white. Okay. So here, um, I grab this quick video. I don't think there's sound. I don't remember now. So the moon, the sun is to the right still. The moon is going around the earth. And as you'll see, like here, from this is where the moon looks like from outer space. From earth, you're going to see a quarter lit. And notice how the light is coming in on the right side. So the moon is getting more lit up over here, continuing lighting up all the way. That's a gibbous. And then till it is right behind earth, it's fully lit. You're going to say, seriously, Millis, if I stand behind something, I'm in its shadow. Why isn't the moon in the Earth's shadow? Well, student, 
And that is because the moon's orbit's tilted. It's not directly in line of the Earth. It's going at a five degree tilt, which is very little, but that's enough for it not to, um, yeah, unpause it. That's enough for it to get out of the shadow. Now, as you see, the moon is going, finishing its orbit. Notice the light has switched to the left side. Yeah, it was on the right side. Now it's changing. Yep, and the darkness is coming in on the right side. So that the is. Sun changed sides. Yep, that's called waning. Now, you wax in the beginning. See, these how are waxing in the beginning, and you wane at the end. Here's Melissa's dumb way to remember it. Okay, you karate kid. He always said, wax on. So think of waxing on. And then waning, no offense, children, but when you two are tired, you whine, right? Mm -hmm. So when the moon's tired, it wanes. It's kind of like whining. Huh? You want to whine? No. Oh, yeah, press play. Hey, okay, Bethany wants to join us. Okay. So then you'll see it continues on. To, to, the new. to the new moon. So the new moon's the beginning of a cycle. It takes yeah. about a month for the moon to... To, to um, turn new. Right. Was How come? a waxing crescent, then fourth quarter, then another waxing... How come? All right. They... So you don't need to rewrite this sentence. Day zero, day four, day seven, day Wait, hold on, 10, sweetie. So day 14, day 18, day 22, bitty. day 26. Bitty. Okay, so the beginning you will have the waxings first, waxing crescent first quarter, then waxing gibbous. So gibbous is almost completely full. And then you'll see the full moon. That means you're halfway through the cycle. It takes about two weeks to get to the full moon. And then you have a waning gibbous. So notice this kind of symmetrical. So you had a waxing gibbous right before, and then you have a waning gibbous, which gibbous means almost completely full. And then you get your third quarter. And then you got your waning crescent, which is the itty bitty lit portion. Whining. Yeah, kind of like whining. The crescent reminds me of a. The crescent reminds me of a crescent roll. So, like crescent. just those things that we roll up from Pillsbury. So think of that. Those look like those crescent rolls we eat. And then the gibbous just means almost completely lit up. And like cooked for the crescent rolls. Yep. Yeah, hey. Then this um, next section is in the proficient area, so we expect all of you to understand eclipses. So, a moon's ecl an, an eclipse means the moon's shadow hits the Earth, or and that's the, the Earth's orbit. shadow hits the moon. An eclipse occurs. And so, so the good, the blue fact is why we don't have eclipses every month. We would have an eclipse every month, except. The moon's orbit, if you see this, is tilted five teeny tiny degrees. And that degrees prevents an eclipse happening every single month. And there's an Earth's orbit right there. Yep. And it goes under. Then it, it does. Goes there. Occasionally, though, there. the moon and the Earth's orbit will overlap. So then you will see an eclipse. Okay, so there's two types of eclipses. There's a solar eclipse. This is a little bit more rare. So a solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes directly between the Earth and the Sun, blocking the sunlight. So look at the picture, Owen. Sun is on the left in this picture. The moon's in the middle. The mm. Earth is here. Oh. Now they happen to line up. So the, the solar eclipse is going to be in this teeny tiny black area. See that black area right there, the shadow? Yeah. That is where the total, total solar eclipse happens. They don't happen very often because that shadow is teeny teeny tiny so those people in that region will see it it is so interesting actually to think of different cultures when they've had solar eclipses they thought the end of the world was happening like ancient cultures because all of a sudden the, the sun went in away in the middle of the day it's kind of freaky deaky to see the sun going away so they kind of written that into their folklore you can ask mr phillips because he knows like weird stuff like that now you'll see a lighter see this purple area yeah that means you're kind of sort in the shadow we call that a penumbra no. umbra is oh, the here. shadow. Think of umbrella. You're underneath something. The penumbra is like the wider part of the shadow. Mm -hmm. If you're here, you're in a, a partial eclipse. That happens a little bit more frequently. So I want you to write these definitions down. Umbra, the umbra. darkest part. Think of umbrella. Umbrella. Umbra. 
Um, it's blood, coming from the same root. I don't speak Latin, so I don't know what that means. But it means something, I'm sure. Oops. oops Penumbra. Oops. oops, dang it. Penumbra is Penumbra. the largest, lighter so part of the shadow. So you'll see that in this eclipse, most of the ocean's going to see it, which is great. It wasted a whole eclipse on, like, whales and stuff. Like, where's my finger? Is? Right. Well, they can't see your is. finger. They can only see your face. Yeah. Well, now they want to see a creepy face. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> Since that shadow's so teeny tiny, very few people are going to see that. We will have an eclipse, I think, in a couple of years. I looked it up. I forget now. Ow. Here's what an eclipse looked like in 1999. This is the moon coming in over the sun. And then all of a sudden, whoa, look at that. That bright, shiny part is called the corona. That is part of the sun. Corona means crown. That is part of the sun. It's only visible to us once the bright part of the sun is blocked. So right, bam, corona of the sun. It exists all the time. It's always there. We just can't see it. It can't pause this one. This occurs in a, a matter of a couple of hours. You'll see the eclipse happen. But what? It's Wait. gonna be the moon we had right now. That's yep. That's the corona. So again, corona. this is the moon blocking the sunlight. Well, no, corona when the, the moon is really yep so skinny that my hands are right now. So lunar eclipse. This happens more frequently than the solar eclipses for different parts of the Earth. So during a lunar eclipse, the Earth is being the Earth blocks the sunlight from reaching the moon. This happens more often because Look at this. You get the sun, the earth, the moon. It orbits when, around. When this is in this position, everybody at nighttime is going to see the moon, right? If I see the moon here in America, Juan Pablo in Guatemala is also going to see the moon, that right? sounds weird. What? It was a guy from The Bachelor. Guanta? So anyway... Everybody on the one side of the earth is seeing the moon at the same time. So when there's a lunar eclipse, the whole side of the earth sees the lunar eclipse. That's why it seems like it happens more frequently. Now again, the moon needs to be in the earth's, or the earth's umbra, the dark part of the shadow. And since the earth is bigger than a moon, it has a bigger shadow, a bigger umbra. And then the penumbra, we'll call a partial lunar eclipse. This usually causes the moon to look kind of reddish in the sky. So in 2003, when you guys were wee little babies, these guys weren't even born yet, we had a lunar eclipse. So you can see the penumbra coming. There you go. You got almost total. There you go. That's about a lunar eclipse. And then the moon is leaving. So you see the umbra here and the penumbra is trailing right there. And this happens over several hours. It's going to repeat itself in a second. And again, anybody at night without clouds in the sky, it's going to see this, the whole side of the Earth. North America, South America, Canadians, as if they count as people, the whole shebang. It They're looks going to see like this. the sun is facing towards them. Well, the sun will be on the other side. Yeah, it looks like it's facing towards So, them. the moon just kind of turns reddish. Okay, here's some <laughs> advanced concepts. Don't funny. pause me, though. You still got to listen to it. Um, tides. <laughs> you know, it looks funny. It does look funny. So, tides... Um, are part of the ocean. They're not necessarily the same as waves or like the river flowing. Tides are a little different. Hey, don't push her off. Tides occur mainly due to the difference in force of gravity between the moon and parts of the earth. So look at my pretty picture. You got the sun. You got the moon. Both of those objects have gravity. We discussed that in that one video with the apple and my amazing Australian accent. So you have those two things, and their their gravitational pull pulls the water from our Earth, and so it bulges out a little bit, creating tides. Since our Earth is spinning, different parts of the Earth are facing those two things different times of the day. So it's a very predictable cycle for tides. So let's go to the next slide. So here's tides in real life. This is like the same area taken hours apart. So you see the water here is very high, and then you see over here the water is low. It's the same trees, the same rocks, but the water here is being pulled from the moon and the sun. Um, if you've ever been to the beach and you built a castle, I know there's a Caillou episode, and Caillou built a castle right like near the water line, and he went to lunch and he came back a few hours later and the castle's gone, and then Caillou whined about it because Caillou whines a lot. No offense, I know you like Caillou. He just whines a lot, and he was so upset that his castle was gone. Think about a time you've That's been to the. Not why 
We like Caillou. Oh, okay, good. He was whining. We don't like it because he whines. We just like it because he's smart. Oh, like they like it because he's smart. Okay, I'll like give him us. that. So, if you've ever been to the beach, maybe you've seen, like, you've had to move your chair or maybe move your stuff because the water is coming up on the beach more. That happens very predictably. Sometimes, like, rocks. Okay, there's two types of tides. Sometimes the sun would be at one place, and then at a right angle, 90 degrees, the moon's at the other place. So the sun's saying, yo, water, come over here. And the moon's like, dude, water, you come on with me. And so the water's being pulled two different directions. So that's yeah. called a neap tide. Some water's being pulled towards the sun, some water's being pulled towards the moon. The sun wants it to melt it. You the think? The moon wants it so it has more craters. Whoa. Smiley Deep face. Deep thoughts by Owen. Okay, a spring tide is when the sun and the moon are working together like, hey, hey we're going to pull you out both of our directions, and it springs up higher. So this happens twice a month. This happens at a full moon position, and this happens at the new moon position. The moon was over here. They both work together, and the gravities are amplified. So the way I remember between the spring and neap tide is that spring tide springs the water up more. It makes it bigger. Neap tide is nice and neat. They're nice and neat. Mm -hmm. And it makes a tide like this. You'll see a tide, but it's not as big as the one previously. Like, like suit. a tide that we wear. Tide. If you're a boy. T-I-D-E. -E, yeah, a D. but it could be like around. Oh. I'm so. I'm about the different tides. <coughs> I get confused. Don't think of the tide that goes oh. around the neck. Yeah, not that kind of tide. A tide. So I want you to uh, understand these concepts. The tides happen every six hours. I want you to write that in your notebook also. Every six hours, you're going to have a high tide. Then as the earth turns, so as our, as our like beaches turn away from the moon and the sun and it faces more sideways here, it's going to go to a low tide and the water is going to recess back into the ocean. And then six more hours later, it's going to face towards the sun, and it's going to spring back up. So the high tides and low tides are very predictable, and they happen six hours apart. So between high and high, that would be 12 hours. Okay, if you have any questions, see Ms. Burkhart or I. This is the beginning of the standard, so you have a lot more activities to do to help you understand these concepts. Okie dokie, Artokis. Okie dokie! Later.